Hi everyone, this video production prepare to be blessed by the ministry of Apostle Joshua Selman as he'll be sharing with us on why many of us keep repeating the same prayer requests every time. This video will bless you so powerfully. Get ready to be blessed. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Thank you so much and God bless you. Most of the things that have been written, most of the requests that we have, most of the desires that we have in our requests, you know, our prayer points, God designed that most of these requests will be answered by growth, not just desires. That means there are many things that we write down hoping that God will meet, hoping that God will solve, that in all fairness, this version of us may not be able to capture them as answers because most requests were designed to be answered through your growth. That means if the believer focuses on growth, spiritual growth, growth in your understanding, you will find out that many of the things you call prayer requests today will naturally fade as you grow. Welcome to Chat Now Channel. We are glad you tuned in today to experience another life-changing encounter in God's presence. The Bible says in Psalm 119 verse 138, The entrance of thy word giveth life. As you listen and watch, may you experience the transformative power of God's life. And here's what the Lord impressed upon my spirit. I wrote it down. I will request that you listen very carefully. That many of the requests of God's people was designed to be answered by growth not desires most of the things that have been written most of the requests that we have most of the desires that we have in our request you know our prayer points god designed that most of this request will be answered by growth not just desires that means there are many things that we write down hoping that god will meet hoping that god will solve that in all fairness, this version of us may not be able to capture them as answers. Because most requests were designed to be answered through your growth. That means if the believer focuses on growth, spiritual growth, growth in your understanding, you will find out that many of the things you call prayer requests today will naturally fade as you grow. When a believer's prayer request continually increases, except you are interceding for others, but if it is your personal desire and month in, month out, year in, year out, it looks like your requests continue to increase, is proof that something is wrong with your growth. There are some things that should no longer become a source of concern in the presence of ever increasing growth. Are we together? When you plant a tree, say a mango tree, you will need to take care of it, provide manure and all of that. But when that mango tree is 10 years, 20 years, sometimes it can be left alone in the forest, unattended to by anyone. And yet it survives, yet it remains. You know why? Because it's been planted, it's gotten deep down, and it's found a way of securing itself regardless the weather. So... God's goal is not for believers to always have prayer requests. There is always something we live in the world of men. Are we together? But that you get to a point where your growth can afford you to see the faithfulness of God in such a way and a manner that you can find rest roundabout. That your desire becomes concerning the issues of others. It becomes an intercessory desire rather than you still contending to have results yourself. Do you believe that? It means a time should come as proof that you are growing. That in all honesty you should search and not even know anything to write again for yourself. Because God would have so sorted you. Not necessarily by asking individually. But that you grew to a point where there was no need for those requests again. Your growth could now purchase higher spiritual realities. Are we together? Yes. Something happens to believers when they grow. Something happens to believers when they increase in wisdom, when they increase in stature, when they increase in favor with God and with men. 
I was almost tempted to sample four people, you know, tonight before beginning my discussion. And just to ask them quite honestly, not to embarrass them. My intention initially was to ask the individuals, tell me what you want God to do in this miracle service for you. And feel free, don't be embarrassed. You would be amazed that many people's request is growth dependent. That means as sincere as they are desiring God to answer, his love for them would not allow some of those requests to be answered. Are we together? Because God is not just interested in meeting your needs. He's interested in you experiencing his glory and then becoming a manifestation of that glory. So in order of spiritual priority, God's highest joy is not to see that your needs are met. His greatest joy is to see that you become an experience of his glory. A manifestation of his glory in experience. It's impossible to be a manifestation of God's glory in experience. And be found wanting in so many areas as captured by your prayer request. Now there's nothing wrong with your prayer request. But I'm challenging you that there is a more excellent way for the believer. That you get to a point where God would have so sorted you by his faithfulness and in honor to your growth. That when it's time to write requests, you will have to be calling people. I'm going to church, what would you want the Lord to do for you? It becomes an intercessory prayer request. Because as for you, you have gained mastery in the spirit. You have gotten to a point where you have laid hold on eternal life, the Bible says. Are we together? You have given diligence to make your calling and your election sure. So while you contend to have your various requests answered, it's important you have it at the back of your mind that God's best for me is not just ticking my answers month in, month out. Are we together? That kind of epileptic victory is not the believer's destiny. The Bible says, now thanks be to God, which causes us always, always, always to triumph. All ways to triumph. I needed to say this because, you see, as a man of God, your greatest desire over your people is to consistently measure their growth. Are we together? That And you measure their growth using many indices. When I was a child, I understood like a child. I spoke like a child. I taught like a child. So these are the biblical indices. So as I speak to you, I can measure your growth. Your words tell me how much you know God and how much you have grown. Your thought pattern, it tells how much the word has prevailed over your mind, prevailed over your thinking. Are we together? The way you understand, which translates to the way you behave. My pride as a man of God over anyone God has put under my care. It's not just that you have once in a while testimonies, but that you lay hold on eternal life. You have attained unto a state of mastery in the spirit. So that you would know what spiritual laws are connected to what outcomes. I hope you understand what I'm saying now. So you are not hoping to come for a miracle service for your finance to be sorted, for your prayer life to be sorted, for favor to speak. No, is that you have laid, you have found the keys. When favor is deficient in your life, by knowledge, you know what to engage. You can literally, with the intelligence of a consultant, you can diagnose another believer's deficiency in light of what you know and then be able to provide solution. So if someone comes to you and says, um, you know, I'm having all kinds of attacks in my life. You don't just say, hey, yeah, this attack is everywhere or you are not the only one. You are even lucky that you are alive. That is not a matured believer's communication. That kind of communication does not defend the word you have received. Are we together? On hearing such a thing, several scriptures and several mysteries and several principles should just go around your spirit that you can draw from them and say, my brother, without sounding arrogant, I have the answer to your problem. It says, Savior shall come out of Zion. Are we together now? Yes. 
that when people see you, they become happy as though they have seen God because you have become a worthy ambassador. That every time you show up in the life of people, in the life of families, your stability is based on knowledge. You don't join people to be at a loss as to what to do. Someone tells you, for instance, all doors are closed towards me. One sermon already begins to ring in your spirit. And you can literally draw forth the principles and say, my friend, if doors are not open, I can tell you what is wrong. Number one, doors open by the use of the correct keys, not the use of keys, the use of the correct keys. You are either holding the wrong key or you are standing before the wrong door. And you can tell the other person doors open because of relationships. When you knock, the person at the back end must be willing to open that door. You have helped that person with precision. Another person comes to you and say, I've been plagued by the spirit of death. All kinds of dreams. You don't look at the person and say, let's pray from a faithless standpoint. Not even believing what you are saying. I hope God is challenging you. And so the average believer will say something like, let's pray. Father, Lord God Almighty, and whatever it is you have to say, we thank you for this day, this man's problem. You are the only one who can solve it. I pray that you solve the person's problem. Let him not die in Jesus' name. That looks very spiritual. But that is not a, a, a worthy representation of the kingdom. Death does not just happen. As haphazard as it looks, there are laws that sponsor death and there are laws that prohibit death. Are we together? Death is not just a phenomenon. Listen, death is also a spirit. The rider upon the fourth horse, holding a pair of balances. His name is death. Power was given to him to kill. So you can tell the person, listen, the Bible says death, life and death is in the power of the tongue. Are we together now? Yes. That I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. And you don't just believe it mechanically. It's going to be a product of deep meditation backed up by obedience. Many of the things that bring believers to a service such as this, I repeat again for your learning, depends not just on the prophetic decrees of the man of God, it depends on their willingness to grow. If you do not grow, it will look like God is not faithful in your life. Regardless the kind of prayer, regardless the kind of prophetic words, you may even receive temporal results, but because the knowledge bank to sustain it is not there, is the reason why Satan is not afraid of certain believers receiving do you know why? Because it's like pouring water in a basket. He's not afraid. Let the prophetic word follow you. You will have the breakthrough, but it means nothing because in the presence of ignorance, ignorance is like a child holding something and an adult wanting it. There's nothing the child can do about it. The adult will just pick it helplessly. That's how many believers are. So the devil is not really concerned whether you receive anything from God. The sower sowed the seed, the word. Satan was not afraid. Listen, there is no record in scripture that Satan fears the word of God. No. There is no record I know in scripture that the devil is afraid of the word of God. Satan is afraid of what happens when the believer engages the word. Because it is at the point of engaging the word that God's power is released to perform. Not the arrival of the word. They heard the word just like we did. But the word did not profit them. Not being mixed with faith. Are we together now? Yes. I'm saying this because it's important. I'll be running through a few things as a charge for us tonight. But this was my contemplation and the Holy Spirit just breathed this reality. And I thought to myself how true this statement is. If I ask you to bring me a sample of the things you have written now, as well intentioned as those lists are, you will find out that if God is a faithful God, some of those prayers should not be answered. Because that version of you, it will not be a blessing if it is answered. In fact, some of the prayer requests are only a testament of your understanding of God. Because what you are writing as the problem may not be the problem. 
For instance, if in your prayer request you wrote, Father, grant Uncle Sam, grant Uncle Joshua Selman to pay my school fees by force. Just an example. Now, you will submit it and just because I'm laying hands on it, does not mean God is committed indefinitely. No. He looks at you the way a father looks like a child. And his mercy overrides your ignorance and limitation. Hoping that you will learn. But in God's ideal template, no. The moment you tie God to a man, you have shown that he's not powerful enough. No. You cannot say God tied it. No, 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 no. God does not work like that. He says, our Lord God, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power. Nothing is too difficult for you. So by the time your faith is tied to a man, it's auxiliary faith. It's not authentic Bible faith. God will use men, but you don't choose the men he will use. <laughs> Are you learning? God will always use men, but you will not choose the men that he will use. So you can see, I'm just showing you an example that so many believers write all kinds of things and just because you drop it in the basket, you are hoping that it will be ticked and you find out that out of the 10 prayer requests, seven of them are products of ignorance. So God just comes by his mercy and just helps you. Hmm. Are we learning? Many of our answers are growth dependent. Many results in your life, I tell you sincerely, will depend on growth, not desire. Desire is important, a fair starting point. But to the believer, commanding victory in experience, commanding total and wholesome victory is not a product of sentiments, it's a product of growth. The Bible says an heir, Galatians chapter 4 and verse 1. For as long as that heir is a child, he says he differed nothing from a servant or a slave. Even though in his destiny he's Lord of all. Give us NIV and see what NIV says concerning this scripture. Can you give us NIV? What I am saying is that as long as an heir is a child, he is no different from a slave. Although he owns the whole estate. So you remain at the realm of potentials when you are a child. Seeing what God can do, but never stepping into the experience of it. Seeing that he can heal, that he can lift, that he can bless, that he can advance, that he can prosper, that he can rewrite stories. Let me tell you the truth. Your Christian experience becomes frustrating when you are aware of what God can do. And yet you do not grow to a point where you step into that experience. Hallelujah. We believe you were blessed by the message you just watched. Let us know what stood out to you in the comment section. You can also support our channel by liking and sharing our videos. So more people like you will be able to watch these powerful messages. We celebrate you and see you in our next video. Thank you.